In this video, my husband dodges low cloud. Mile base about 1100 feet. Uh, roger. Makes it to the Eurofox flying Popham. Talks about planes. Meets some incredible people. And finally sees some blue skies. Well, hello everyone. Today is a really exciting day because we are flying to Popham for the Eurofox fly-in. The weather has been really unfavorable and as a result of that and also because of the change of day, we lost a few pilots who were hoping to attend but obviously can't, which is really sad. I was looking forward to meeting a few of the guys that aren't able to now make it. But I am looking forward to getting there and then also after that I'm taking my aircraft over to Lukesfield in Kent. The reason being is that the instrument panel is going to be upgraded to a carbon fiber panel and more instruments are going to be added to help me and Eve out. And I'll go through those changes once the aircraft is back. So just waiting for the engine to warm up and do our pre-flight checks. The wind is straight down the runway. It is a bit gusty. The cloud base has lifted. I originally had intended to take off at around 8 o'clock this morning. It's now 11.20 and it's taken this long for the conditions to reach a level where it's it's possible for us to fly. Uh, reading you five, but with quite a little bit of background crackle. And uh, hopefully that's got rid of that reading you five also. Yep, that's uh, solved the problem altogether. Yeah, it's a dodgy transmit, but on the P2 side. Understood. Right, given that we are now up to temperature, and we are up into the wind, I'm going to do my pre-takeoff checklist here. Spyview, Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf, taxiing to the hold of runway 01, Spyview. Right, okay, so we've done our checks there. Five traffic, this is Golf Charlie Delta of the Kilo taxiing for hold of runway 01. Five Five view, Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf entering runway 01 for immediate rolling departure. Five view. Approaching waypoint. Mile base about 1100 feet. Uh, roger. Approaching waypoint. View, Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf departing the circuit to the southeast at 1100 feet. Golf Charlie Golf, Roger, good luck. Thank you very much and see yourselves. Approaching waypoint. Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf, changing to onward, onward frequency 126.7. Golf Charlie Golf, Roger. Right, next one will be Popham after that. 129.805. 129.805. 
Boscombe Zone, Golf Charlie Oscar Charlie Golf requesting zone transit. Not expecting them to be open today. We know that they're closed and the NOTAMs tell me that they are closed, but I am just being super cautious. Those who watched my last journey to Popham remember that I'll have done exactly the same thing. I still did blind calls just in case. I'd rather do that than uh, have an infringement. So glad to have heating in this aircraft. It's warmed me up quite nicely, nice and toasty. So we are having some changes done to the panel of this aircraft. This aircraft panel at the moment is aluminium with a vinyl wrap on it, which looks incredibly like carbon. It's been done beautifully. So I'm having that upgraded to a carbon panel, but not because I specifically want a carbon panel. It just allows me uh, an opportunity to do that. Most of the instruments are staying exactly as they are. The only thing that we are having added is an, another set of instruments here so that anyone in the P2 position will be able to see exactly what's going on. And a few other controls as well. And those are mostly for Eve. Eve likes to know what's going on. She likes to be able to keep her eye on what's happening. But not only that, the controls that we're having added will allow her to be able to control the autopilot uh, in the event of something happening to me, which will then buy her time to be able to uh, call for help. She still seems reluctant to want to learn to fly. Let's just uh, do our call again. Oscar Zone, Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf, requesting zone transit. Now we're getting a little bit of precipitation on the windscreen there, but that's okay. Doesn't look too heavy at the moment. So the cloud base has lifted considerably now. I was originally at about 1,100 feet. I'm now at 1,300 and climbing at uh, roughly 450 feet a minute. Bossington is a, an airfield that should just be to my right-hand side. I see it. Yep. So if I have an engine out, I'm going to be going for that one. Up to about 1,600 feet now. That's amazing. Whoa. There you should go. There's Jill Bolton, radio telescope, I think it is. Almost managed 2,000 feet now, that's amazing. Great. It really is lifting all the time. Well, I'm very sorry that's not a particularly pretty view, but hopefully it won't be long before we are at Popham. So as soon as I get to Bullington Cross, I'm going to switch over frequencies to Popham, and then I'll give them a shout. Hopefully they won't be too crazy busy. Right, let's switch over to Popham. Approaching waypoint. Popham Radio, Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf, requesting join. Golf Charlie Golf, uh, Popham Radio, runway 03, left hand QFE 1007. 03, left hand 1007, Golf Charlie Golf. Popham Radio, Golf Charlie Delta Victor India above Bulletin Cross, request to join. Golf Victor India, runway 03 left hand, QFE 1007. Runway uh, 03 left hand, QFE 1007. Golf Victor India. Approaching waypoint. Golf Charlie Oscar Charlie Golf descending dead side runway 03 left hand. Roger. Uh, Bottom score Victor India with a base joint be okay? Victor India, Roger. Golf to India, final. Golf to India. Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf, downwind, runway 03, left hand. Golf Charlie Golf, Roger.
Go Charlie Golf, go Charlie Golf, final runway zero three. Charlie Golf, Roger. Speed. Thanks, guys. Shortly after arrival, the radio calls started to come in thick and fast with more Eurofoxes on approach. Waiting for them to land gave an opportunity to speak with Chris and David Palmer, who had flown in for the event in their runs S7. Here's what Chris had to say. Right, so uh, we, <laughs> we're here with Chris, who's flown all the way from... Barling, which is a little farm strip um, just uh, east of Southend-on-Sea. Fantastic. And how long have you been flying from there? Uh, so we've been based there for a little over a year now, um, and I've had my PPL for about two years. Is this your first aircraft? Uh, father's first aircraft, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, first, first, um, our first intro into aircraft ownership, and uh, I think it's been a great experience so far, yeah. Did your dad learn to fly at the same time as you, or has he had a little bit, a little bit more experience? Um, oh, he's been around aircraft for years, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the new guy to this one. Is that what inspired you to get involved? Yeah, I mean, my earliest um, aviation memories was uh, Southern Air Show, and um, remember uh, seeing a Catalina flying boat landing on the Thames Estuary, uh, you know, at the air show, and that from you know from being a kid this big, uh, that really stuck in my mind, and loved aircraft ever since. Fantastic. So tell us about your aircraft. So it's a Rams S7, um, kit built by a guy called Maurice. Um, and we didn't actually know till we got it back to Barling or basically South End, but it was built at South End Airport by Maurice um, back in 2003. Sadly, he's passed away, but we are in touch with one of his daughters. Um, so hope, hopefully meet up with her soon. <coughs> the Rams S7 um, was actually developed before the Rams S6 Microlight, which most people were um, familiar with. However, the, the demand for a side-by-side -side two-seater superseded that of a tandem. So the S6 went into production first, but the S7 was actually designed first, but it wasn't as popular. I believe there's only nine on the UK registry at the moment, so it's, it's quite rare. And what engine does it have? So it's got a Rotax 912 UL, which is the 80 horsepower. Yeah, and it's got warp drive, 72-inch warp drive prop. Grout the dust. Do you think that's enough power for it? I mean, does it seem to climb nicely for you? Happy with the cruise speed? Yeah, um, for us, our, our mission was operating out of short fields. We operate out of a 400 metre strip. 
the advantage of a ground adjustable prop is we can set it for sort of acceleration as opposed to cruise power. So maybe we're not as fuel ec as economic fuel efficient not as fuel we'll edit that one not as fuel efficient as you know the, the guys running you, you know bigger things um but like i say we get airborne at max takeoff weight in less than 200 meters and we're cruising at about 5,000 rpm burning 16 liters an hour um it's got 65 liters of fuel on board so it comfortably gives us three hours range with 30 minutes um you, you know extra fuel to it's a nice performing aircraft actually and, and uh, when you trained did you do side to side training as opposed to front to back in terms of the seating arrangement? Okay great question so I did all my PPL in a mix of Cessna 152 and Cessna 172 um, at Southland Airport so you know full air traffic control you, you know proper aeroplanes mile long runway you know very different environment to this and um, so once I got my MPPL at uh, PPL sorry I got my PPL uh, 45 hours um, and then I did about 10 hours just renting planes getting a bit of experience then I went to the Tiger Club at Damon's Hall and got my tailwheel um, check out with the Tiger Club in G Sway which is a super cub um, and yeah totally different world and the world I found actually suits me better you know old tail dragger aircraft you know grass strip flying you, you know that for me that's real flying for me everyone enjoys different things I'm sure there's people who love flying in a Cirrus at 10,000 feet but for, for me this this really really made best way to see the countryside a a absolutely um so yeah tiger club recommends anyone who wants to get a tower wheel check out tiger club at damon's hall definitely give them a shout um, are there any changes or modifications that you'd like to make to the aircraft to be honest as it stands it, it does everything i need and and i think um yeah you'd not put big tundra tires on it and vortex generators but to be honest the aircraft is already more capable than I am and you know for me I personally think it'd be a bit bit of bling I've got a phone mount for Sky Demon I've got an airspeed indicator and out of me what, 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 what more do you need <laughs> exactly it does what we need it to awesome well thank you very much Chris yeah. for showing us around your aircraft and uh, your dad as well yeah no pleasure to meet you and uh, he's a bit of a bit camera shy I believe <laughs> he is and uh, ho hopefully we can tag along to some more Eurofox events because uh, unfortunately being only nine in the country uh, there aren't any organized events and even if they were I don't think people want to fly down from Scotland to join us <laughs> so um, yeah ho hopefully we can tag along with you guys some more you'll be very welcome thanks a lot while shutting to Chris a skulk of hero foxes had collected on the apron, bringing a rainbow of colours to an otherwise grey day. Nick McLeod flew with his daughter all the way from Scotland to attend the event. Here he is arriving in Golf November Mike Charlie Lima. You may remember seeing this beautiful tail dragger in one of our previous videos when we first met Golf Zulu Delta Echo Echo at Wadswick Farm last year. Clear prop! Radio Golf Yankee Zulu lining up on 03 for immediate departure. Golf Yankee Zulu. Golf Yankee Zulu, Roger, no reported traffic on final currently. Surface wind is 01010 knots. 
Radio Golf India Mike Papatango requests airfield information for local flight. Uh, Golf Papatango, good afternoon. Runway New Zero 3 with a left hand circuit. And the QH is 1028. Zero 03 left hand, QH 1028. Golf Papatango. Golf Yankee Radio vacated, Kira. Golf Papatango lining up, 0-3. Golf Papatango, Roger, no reported traffic on final approach. Uh, it's a wind 0-2-0, Golf Echo India lining up, 0-3. Echo India, Roger, wind 0 one zero, 10 knots, no reported traffic on final. Golf Echo India, take it off, 0-3. Radio Golf, Zulu Zulu Delta, request radio check and taxi. Golf Zulu Delta, Roger, runway radio check, strength 5, runway new 03 with the left hand circuit and the QNH 1028. 1028, Golf Zulu Delta. Golf Charlie Oscar Charlie Golf, ready for departure. Uh, Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie, Golf, uh, no reported traffic on final, surface wind is 01010 knots. Roger, Golf Charlie, Golf. Golf Papa Tango, departing circuit to the north, staying on frequency. Golf Papa Tango, Golf from here, Oscar descending on the test path, to pull 03 to land. Traffic. Golf Delta lining up runway zero three for immediate. Golf Zulu Delta, Roger. No reported traffic on final. Surface wind is zero one zero twelve knots. Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf, downwind, and would like permission to depart on the base leg. Uh, Roger. Golf Delta, leaving the circuit on the runway direction. Uh, Golf Zulu Delta, Roger, thanks for your visit. Have a good flight. Thank you very much, Golf Zulu Delta. Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf, departing the circuit on the base leg, visual with the aircraft on final. Go Charlie Golf, Roger. Welcome back everyone. So we went to the fly in the pop-in. It was relatively well attended. Unfortunately, the weather took a little while to clear. In fact, this is the best of it now, which is sad because it's the time when most people are planning to leave. I met some amazing people there. We had one gentleman who was kind enough to give me a headset holder, which he'd 3D printed, which is very, very generous but also I've uh, met some, some fantastic people. I just wish the weather had been better and that we'd been able to take advantage of the day a little bit more and uh, perhaps more people who were hoping to attend uh, could have attended. Uh, we had some honorary Eurofoxes at, in attendance, uh, one of which uh, you'll have seen or, or will see the interview for. A chap called Chris Palmer and his dad who flew in. Go from here, we have a case of the other thing. But no, a really great day, a really very, very enjoyable indeed. And now I'm heading across to Luke's Field in Kent to leave the aircraft with them for changes, modifications, updates, servicing, etc. I bumped into two of the chaps who work with Eurofox at the Eurofox event, which was quite nice, and had a quick chat with them. And everything is organized. So now I am just racing Eve who is traveling cross country, who left about three o'clock. It's 3.50 for me, but I'm racing her across country to Kent. So she's very, very sweetly driving all the way across to Kent to collect me from Luke's field. Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie, Golf changing to onward frequency. Uh, Golf Charlie, Golf Roger, thanks for your visit. Have a good flight. 
Thank you so much for entertaining us. Uh, we'll see you in the future. Golf Charlie Golf. After what was a short flight for Jeff and seemingly endless drive for me, yet covering only a relative small distance, we both finally arrived at the Eurofox factory in Kent. Jeff tied down Charlie Golf and made sure she was tucked in safely for the night ahead before we both headed off into the sunset, that is to say heading west to Dorset.